Have you seen someone doing this to alleviate hand pain? This is a typical sign of carpal tunnel syndrome. The person will feel a heavy pain, some tingling in the fingers, mostly in the thumb, index, and middle finger. They may also have numbness and weakness in the hand. There are some activities that predispose a person to have carpal tunnel syndrome, like anything that bends the wrist too much or anything that occupies a space inside of the wrist. Today, I'll tell you what causes carpal tunnel syndrome, how a person can find if they have this condition, how to manage the symptoms, and how to avoid surgery. So today, let's talk about carpal tunnel syndrome. There is a nerve called median nerve that passes inside the wrist. The wrist contains this thick band like a very strong bracelet to protect the structures inside it. The median nerve is responsible for controlling the muscles of the thumb and this part of the palm of the hand. The skin sensations in this area are transmitted to the brain via the median nerve. So any injury to the median nerve here will lead to sensory loss sensation in this area and weakness of the muscles of the thumb and palm. The sensation loss is usually noticed before the weakness. This is because the fibers that carry sensation information are thinner and easier to get bruised. The nerve fibers that control the muscles are thicker and more protected by myelin but eventually, if there is no treatment, even the thicker fibers will get damaged. One of the signs that the muscles are getting weaker is atrophy of this part, the thinner eminence, this area of the hand. And the person will notice weakness to do a movement like an O. This is usually very strong, but when they have advanced medial nerve damage, they will not be able to hold this O very strong. Carpal tunnel syndrome is common in people with manual labor who do repetitive bending of the wrist. This is, in fact, one of the tests that we do to find out if the person has carpal tunnel syndrome or not. We ask the person to hold this position for two minutes, shoulders relaxed, elbows bandaged, and if they start feeling numbness and tingling in the fingers, especially the thumb, index, and middle finger, this is likely carpal tunnel syndrome. There are some conditions that put a person at higher risk of carpal tunnel syndrome, like diabetes, thyroid disease, rheumatoid arthritis, and pregnancy. When we suspect of carpal tunnel syndrome, we usually order a test called nerve conduction study, and sometimes we need to do a electromyography or EMG too. This is important to assess the severity and need for surgical intervention. Also, it's important to distinguish if the pain and weakness is not coming from the neck or cervical spine. The nerve conduction study and EMG will be able to show if the problem is at the wrist level, the elbow, axilla, the neck, or the cervical spine. I have another video that I explain what a nerve conduction study is and an electromyography that you can watch and learn more about this test. In mild to moderate cases of carpal tunnel syndrome, when there is only reduced speed of nerve conduction at the wrist level, the only thing that is recommended is to avoid bending the wrist. This is especially important at night because we might not pay attention and spend various hours with our wrists like this, sleeping. Usually if the person wears this night splint for 12 weeks, there is a lot of improvement in the symptoms. There are many splints that are readily available in pharmacies and you don't need to buy anything too fancy or expensive. There are no exercises that can make carpal tunnel syndrome better. But it is important to pay attention to position, posture, ergonomics, especially for people who spend a lot of time on the computer or doing manual work. It's also important to avoid myofacial pain of the forearm, the shoulder, the neck, because if the person has trigger points, they may radiate pain down to the arm and add more pain to the already painful hinge. 
In some patients, we also do an injection of steroids in the area to reduce swelling and inflammation around the nerve. This may provide some relief for a couple of weeks to months, but the problem may return and the person may need another injection. If the nerve conduction study shows that there is a severe disease, this means that there is damage to the myelin around the nerve, affecting the speed of the electrical transmission in the nerve, but severe diseases also means that there is reduction of the amount of axons that is transmitting information. Then a referral to surgery is indicated as soon as possible. It's really important to prevent more loss of axons, which may lead to more weakness of the hand. Surgery, in most cases, is only a small cut in the hand under anesthesia. They open up a thick, this thick bracelet around the median nerve and make more space for the nerve to breathe. It's usually a day surgery, the person doesn't need to sleep in the hospital and they go home on the same day of the surgery. The recovery after surgery may take months. The person will need to use a daily splint and will have to avoid activity of the hinge. It's really important to do physiotherapy to maintain good range of motion uh, and strength of the hands, the fingers, elbow, shoulder during this rehabilitation period. Please don't forget that this video is for educational purposes only. If you have a condition that needs medical advice, please talk to your doctor. And if there is emergency, go to the nearest emergency department. Press the share button below to send this video to anyone with carpal tunnel syndrome that you think might like this video. In the comments below, also write down if you have carpal tunnel syndrome and what works for you. If you like this video, give a thumbs up turn on the notifications and don't forget to subscribe to this channel. You can also find me on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. Thank you for watching. Goodbye!